Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another video for the Salesforce Flow series. Today we're going to be creating a screen flow. We're going to be creating a uh, list view button and we're going to be using a collection variable called IDS. And we're also going to be um, creating in behavior uh, for our flow URL as well. So this is going to be a jam-packed video showing you a lot of really cool things you can do with Flow. So if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content. But let's just jump straight into it. So looking at the contacts, what we're going to do today is if you've played in Salesforce at all, you know it can be really annoying to change the owner of multiple records. Now you could run a report and get your IDs and data load and change the owners that way. But... What I want to do is create a button here on this list view that says assign to me and you'll be able to go through and hit these check boxes and then hit that button and the owner will automatically change to you, whoever's running the flow. And after the flow runs, it will actually bring you back to this list view as well. Because if you don't add end behavior, it'll just say your flow is finished or you could have a screen pop up as well. Um, but we're going to do both. Now, I'll show you how you currently change owners in Salesforce. So right now, I'm going to be changing it to Jimmy James from me. So when you hit the drop down, you're going to hit change owner. You're going to select Jimmy James, hit submit. That one record is now changed to Jimmy James. Now, if you had to do all 23 of these records, it would take a long time to do that. So we're going to automate this with Flow. And if you're not already, you will need to be in the uh, flows uh, section here, the flow builder. So to search flow in your quick find, and we're going to hit new flow. All right, now that we're here, we have a bunch of different options. We're going to be selecting screen flow. So now with screen flows, you're not going to have any entry requirement. A lot of times, I mean, they're going to be launched via a button. That, that's just how they're going to get launched. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to create a variable where we're going to store the IDs that are being passed to the flow. Now with buttons, you could uh, you could go this about a go about it a couple of different ways. You could have the user hit a button and then have the user enter in the values into a screen and then pull the records based on that information. Or you can have them check those check boxes on the con uh, over here on the contacts and then have them passed automatically over to the flow. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to click right here in the toggle toolbox and we're going to hit new resource. Now under resource type, we're going to create a variable resource type. Now API name, you're going to want to call this IDS. You can add a description if you'd like. Now the data type is going to be text and you need to allow multiple values. It's a collection. Hit that checkbox and you need to make sure you select available for input. We're going to hit done. So if you see over here, we got our collection variable all set up. Now we're going to hit the plus icon here. And what we're going to do next is we are actually going to do a loop. Now we're going to call this contact loop. Add a description if you'd like. So the collection variable you're going to be looping through is the IDs, IDS. And then you can either choose from first item to last, last to first. I know I've used loops to sort through names before, and I wanted to go in a certain order, so I actually did last to first. But this one, it really doesn't matter. All right, so now we have our loop set up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit the plus icon, and we're going to hit update record element here. And we're going to call this change owner. So now we have a couple options. It says use the IDs and all values from a record or collection. Specify conditions to identify records and set fields individually. We're actually going to select the specify conditions. And it's going to be on the contact object. And right here on the filter contact records, I want the contact ID to equal the current item that's in the loop. So it's going to filter out all the contact records to make it match up with the ID that is in the loop. And the loop, if you don't know, it sends one 
um, ID through the loop at a time. It's not going to send two, so that's why you're looping through the records one at a time. Now we're going to set the field values for the contact record. This is pretty simple. We're just going to have owner and we're going to set that to now to set it to the user that launched the flow. You're going to hit user and then ID and that's how you set that value and it looks just like that. We're going to hit done. So now it flows through, it sends in the IDs and it's going to get the contact IDs that match the one that's currently in the loop. And then it's going to change the owner to whoever launched the flow. All right, now that we've done that, our flow is pretty much set up to run here. Now we could go ahead and add our last screen element in. I think I'm going to have it set up to say that all the owners have been changed. Uh, but we're going to do that in a minute because I kind of want you to see what the flow looks like before we add in the end behavior on the URL and no um, screen that pops up to the user. So I'm actually going to go ahead and save this flow and I'm going to call this uh, assign uh, to me. All right, so currently I've saved the flow. I haven't activated it yet. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and do is we need to go ahead and create a new list view button and add it to our contact list view. So to do that, we're going to need to be, I want to duplicate this page real quick. We're going to go ahead to object manager and let's go ahead to the contact. Now over here we have list view button layout and you can see which list view buttons are already there. So these are the standard buttons, and if you look here, you can see add to campaign and all that stuff is sitting there, which I'm actually going to uncheck that. That's how you can remove some of this stuff off here. There's like a, a lot of stuff. Let me take it off. I want to save it real quick. All right, cool. We're going to go back in and edit. So click here to create a new custom list button. Okay. We're going to name this assign uh, to me puts in the name here, the API name. So we have detail page link, detail page button, and a list uh, list button. We want the list button. And it says display checkboxes for multi-check records. That's fine. Now here, this is what's interesting. We're creating the button. And this section here is actually where you're going to put your URL. Because you do could do JavaScript, Visual Force page, and we're not doing any of that. So we actually need the URL from the flow. So to get the URL from the flow, you're actually going to come over here and to back to your flow section. So if you're in your flow and you hit the back button uh, out of flow builder, it takes you back to here. Okay. And you look over assigned to me, go to the right, hit this drop down and hit view details and versions. All right. So now the flow URL is right here. You're going to copy this. And you're going to come back over to your contact and you're going to paste it in. Now you're going to hit check syntax and it says no errors. So we are good to go there and we're going to hit save. And what that's saying there is, hey, you created it, but you need to lay, add it to a page layout or a list view. And it's, all, it's going to display that anytime you create a button. So go back to your list view layout, list view button layout. And now we can add our custom button assigned to me and we're going to hit save. Now... If I refresh this, all right, so now we have our assign to me button, which is perfect. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to go ahead and activate this flow. So we are going to test this thing out now. So now we have one, two, three, four records out of all these, oh, five, if you count this one down here, that have been changed to James from me. We're going to select the first two. And I want to assign those to me. Let's see what happens. Your flow has finished. So I'm going to hit the contact record. And I want to switch back to all contacts. I want to actually pin that as my uh, favorite list view. So now I have the two that I selected. They're changed to me. The two that I didn't select, I mean, excuse me, the three I didn't select are still James. So the flow worked which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So the flow 
took the records that I selected, it updated and changed the owner and spit it out. Now, I don't really like the end behavior. You saw how it says your flow is finished. And if you're doing development for an org, you don't want your users to really see that. So to add end behavior, this is a, what you keep seeing me click on here. Uh, this is an article that's going to be in the description. This is very useful on how to uh, customize uh, flow in behavior or finish behavior. I'll call it both. Um, it, you can actually do chatter, homepage, a list view. And what I have here is this code here is your object code. This right here is your list view ID. And I'm going to show you how to get both because it's actually useful to know how to do this. So to get for me in my work to get the contact, uh, number, if you go to a contact, the first three digits, that's the code that Salesforce assigns for this being a contact record. So 003. So that's what mine's going to be. The question mark is like a separator within the code. FCF, I'm not sure, 100% sure what that means. And then the equals is actually the list view ID. And to get a list view ID, you're going to go back to contact. And whatever list view, this right here is your list view ID. So if I switch this to... Um, new last week, it changes your ID changes. And that's what that one's going to be. But I want this one to go to all contacts. So we're going to go back over here to our contact list view button. And we're going to here. Now we're in here. We're going to edit the assigned to me list view button. So we'll hit the drop down and then edit. And this is where you're going to add your end behavior in. So to do this, you're actually, they have plenty of examples here, but it has like flow, flow name, and then the question mark serves as a separator whenever you're doing this. So you're actually going to grab this. I can't remember where I was at. Sorry. And you're going to put question mark, return URL. And if you follow along here and you look, now we're going to put in our object code, which is 003, and then following along, you're going to want to put the question mark FCH equals. And now we need our list view code, which is right here. And we're going to check the syntax. No errors. Awesome. So we're going to hit save. So you don't have to reactivate your flow. You don't have to do anything. I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to refresh this browser on my list view. And now we're going to add the, these two of James to me. We're going to change the owner. So we're going to select here and hit assign to me. Now the flow in behavior takes me directly back to the list view instead of displaying that it finished the flow. The flow ran successfully. As you can see, there's only one record left for James. Now, the last thing I want to do is actually display a screen to the user, letting them know it's been successful. So I'm actually going to change owner of these back to James real quick, and we're going to test it again. All right, I finished changing a few of these to James. We're going to go back to our flow. We're actually going to deactivate the flow, and I'm going to go ahead and add in a screen component right at the very end. And we're going to tell the user that we successfully changed the owner of the records to them. So now we're going to add a display uh, text section in here. And I'm going to hide the header because I don't really want that in there. I want to go ahead and configure the footer. So I want to hide. Well, we can use, we'll use a custom here. We're going to put finish. And we're going to hide previous. We're going to hide pause. Perfect. And you have to give it an API name. I'll just call it finish. All right, screen property. We'll call this, yeah, uh, success. You can call it whatever you want. So in the text element, we'll call this um, display to user. Doesn't matter. You can actually use this as a resource to display record IDs if you're ever doing any troubleshooting, which I'll probably show you in a future video. It's pretty cool. In here in the center, you're going to hit center. Uh, records have been assigned to you. 
and I want to make it bigger. So I want to make it like 18 and bold so it stands out. And we're done. We're going to save as. Now it's going to make you save it as a new version. That's typical with Flow if you make any changes after you activate it. All right, so the flow's activated now. So we're going to try to run it. So we're going to select all three of these and we'll leave this one alone to make sure that the flow runs successfully. We're going to hit assign to me. Look at this. Records have been assigned to you. Finish. And then the flow end behavior runs after the flow. So that's a great way to remember it too. That end behavior that we assigned in the URL, it runs after this is complete. So as it flows in, it'll kick, uh, show the screen to the user. They have to click finish. After that, then the end behavior uh, will run and it'll put them back to the list view. So I hope you found this uh, flow video informative. I had a really good time putting this together. Um, it's something I actually did in my org at, where I worked before for something we're doing. So this is a real world scenario. So I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.